Today we're excited to have with us two incredible people from different backgrounds, but share so much in common with Fabio DeMello and Kelly Gunther, an Olympic athlete and a very successful businessman. It wasn't easy for them, um, but we're excited to be able to talk to you guys and interact with you guys and ask you a few questions about how you got to where you're at. We're so grateful to have you here. And uh, Kelly, I, I just want to start with you. I want to ask you, you're now an Olympian. When was that first inkling that you had a need for speed, that you, want, you knew you wanted to be a speed skater? I grew up in a roller rink. I just went on a local, I think maybe Sunday, um, to the, really a small town that I lived in in Ohio um, for the time being, and I just fell in love with it. I went that day in a Sunday afternoon, open skate, um, and then just kept going back because I knew I wanted to be on roller skates. You know, as a six-year-old little girl, I just loved it. And being mm -hmm. actually that six-year-old little girl, I remember watching it on TV, the Olympics. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it was Taryn Kapinski or Michelle Kwan, um, who I watched at that time at the Olympic Games and saying, I want to be in that stage. I want to win a gold medal. Um, so right from six years old, I knew I wanted to go to the Olympics. So I then did figure skating on roller skates because I was never wanted to go to the cold. Um, it's funny, um, now that I'm an ice skater, I didn't want to go to the, to the ice <laughs> rink. Um, but I think I was just because I grew up in a roller rink and, you know, being the roller rink rat and, you know, knowing everything. Um, so that fast forwarding, I did um, art skating for about six years with the jumps and spins, um, little costumes, loved it. It was, it was amazing. But I was always too fast for the music. I could never hear the beat because um, I just wanted to go fast. Um, but I loved the hair and makeup. You know, as a six-year-old little girl, I loved it. But then I got introduced to inline speed skating. And that was a world change because I just wanted to go fast. And it was going fast and turning left every day. Here I am 25 years later still doing it. Um, so that just goes to show that it was amazing. And you have to know what you want to do in that moment and just follow your dreams up to that path. Wow, Kelly, that was incredible. I, I, such a young age, six years old, unbelievable. So, Fabio, when did you first know you wanted to be a successful businessman, and, and where, what were your circumstances? I remember being very young and just, you know, the thought of creating solutions, providing services to somebody was very, very appealing to me. You know, I grew up in a, in a very humble neighborhood in Brazil, you know, and, and the dirt was very red as it as if you see here in, in St. George, Utah. So I remember as a kid, you know, everybody just wearing very red, dirty shoes. I, I was probably 10 or 11 years old when I started thinking maybe I should start cleaning shoes so everybody can walk in, in and you know, go to school in, 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 a, in a clean pair of shoes. And that's what I did. I went through my neighbors, you know, and surprisingly they were surprised as well. And, you know, my first weekend I was wa washing 30, 40 shoes, you know, and started recruiting kids from the neighborhood, and all, all of a sudden we had a business going on at a very young age. There was three or four of us washing shoes for a couple of weeks, and it didn't last long for me to save a little bit and start my next business. Kelly, I would really like to know about your mom, because I know I've read a little bit, and I know what an inspiration she was to you, and, and both of you share that in common. You both have single mothers, that had to work very, very hard. Tell me about your mom. Um, definitely, I'll try to get through without crying. <laughs> as I got older, <laughs> in my old age, I tend to cry, because as a teenager, I never cried, so I think it's just kind of catching up with me in life. Um, but yeah, my mom is definitely my biggest supporter, um, my biggest rock, um, was always there throughout my whole life. Um, and it's always just been, kind of like a Team Kelly, I think, Team Kelly, Team Julie sort of thing. So I think just having her, you know, alongside of me has been spectacular. It's been my biggest rock, um, everything. She literally has given up her life um, for me to be able to follow my dream. And I don't know, besides Fabio, how many, you know, <laughs> single moms can say that to give up their life, you know, for their child, um, to be able to support them and 
follow them to their dreams and not know if they're going to make it or not make it because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So I think that's just pretty special in itself to have her, um, you know, still on this journey also um, to follow me and to keep going and to, you know, still giving up her life at 55 years old. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty special. Fabio, Kelly's mother was such an inspiration to her. Can you tell me about somebody in your life that was that kind of an inspiration for you? You know, it, it is interesting that somebody with, that comes from a completely different background have very similar experience. My mom was everything to me. She, she's the one that inspired us. She's the one that put us in a, on track. You know, as growing up was never easy. You know, often we felt like I had double lives. You know, I grew up with a parent who was addicted to alcohol. You know, my dad suffered with that his entire life. So we, we had a, a not so good life inside of the home and in a great childhood outside of the house. You know, so my mom had to work extremely hard to keep us focused and away from the alcohol in, in many ways, because we had that available inside of the house. Uh, she took steps to put us in a good position to make good decisions. One of the things that I remember my mother saying, uh, similar to Kelly's mother's experience, is setting up a vision to what you wanted to be. You know, as Kelly was explaining, she knew what she wanted to be. You know, to me it was somewhat easy. I wanted to be everything but what my dad was doing at the time. Um, and that's a struggle because you had a, I had an amazing man in the morning, somebody that I could look up to, and in the afternoon he was a completely different person. So it didn't take much for my mother to realize she had to go and work and to support our family. And so I remember being as a, as a little child, she got a job as a housekeeper, and uh, she started working at this person's house, which turned out to be an incredible woman, which uh, we call her, her Tia now, which is Aunt, Aunt Tia Sylvia. And this woman helped us uh, to become who we are today. You know, we talk about angels and mm -hmm. things that happens to our life. You know, I hate to mention names because we usually forget names of people that uh, helped us throughout the way but she's definitely one that uh, comes to my mind. Um, as my mom was working at her house, you know, she, you know, she had every reason in the world to treat my mom as a housekeeper, and instead she started treating my mom as a, as a, as a family. You know, I, I can't quite remember what age we started uh, uh, visiting her house. My mom used to work on the weekends in her house, and every other weekend, my mom would bring one of us to her house. And to us was an inspiration. This was a very successful person, I lived in a, in a very big home. And to us was a vacation, <laughs> right? Coming from the humble neighborhood that we grew up. You know, but more important than that was that this woman uh, took little steps to, to help us. But at one point in our lives, this woman asked my mom, she knew about our struggles with the alcohol inside of our house. What else can I do to help you? And my mom, being who she was, and I know exactly why she answered that question the way she did, she said, I wish I had a chance to go to school because I know that's what's going to get us out of the situation that we have now. And crazy enough, my mom you know, went back to high school. And after that, this same person who's helping us said, well, what else can I do for you? My mother said, I would like to go to college. And remember, this is a, a very successful woman dealing with the housekeeper and putting that vision into my mom. So it didn't take longer for my mom to finish school and, and I remember just our lives completely changing from being, from having not much inside of the house to suddenly having my mom in a medical field and, and you know, food all over the house and toys. And you know, I am extremely grateful for this woman who, in a, in a way, she's an angel. You know, she made us this possible for our family. You know, with a very simple responsibility, she had enough, and somehow she thought I could help this family. And the way she helped it, um, it was by giving us an opportunity to get an education. So my mother did take, take no shortcuts. Uh, she went through school, and um, she made sure that every single one of her kids I had that plenty in mind, and that's kind of a how everything started, and that's how I ended up in the United States. Fabio, every time I ask you guys something, it's amazing because you guys have such positive answers and positive spin on anything. But what was the toughest thing for you? I had difficulties in high school, diagnosed years later with you know, severe ADD, 
And it made it very difficult for me to focus unless I was studying chemistry and physics and mathematics. That's about the only thing that I had interest in studying. Oddly enough, you know, uh, you know, I wouldn't miss those classes. But you put me into a geography class and a history class, I just hated. I was done in about five minutes. And I remember just, you know, it didn't take much time for the teachers to realize that. So I remember my second year, the principal knew, by, knew me by name. And he, I remember him saying, you are so special. And I <laughs> believed it. I thought it was a special reality. He knew I had some difficulties in, in staying in class. But I started swimming in high school and somewhat mm -hmm. similar to Kelly. I decided to focus. I would spend hours and hours in a swimming pool and missing class. And that was my excuse. I don't, I'm not going to history class. Mm -hmm. I'm going to swim because that's something that I could do well. But, uh, you know, similar to what you said a few minutes ago, that's what made you who you are today. And I feel the same way. You know, I, as a child, I used to ask myself, why do I have to have the father that way? If it wasn't for my mother, just showing so much love and, and uh, keeping us together, I don't know where I would be. You know, that's funny because often we, we try to put a relation to uh, uh, the relationship that we have with God. Mm. And, you know, He gave us trials for everything that we do in life. He certainly blessed us with an amazing mother uh, that He knew we could manage the process. Otherwise, I don't think we would be here today, you know, with all the Absolutely. examples that she, she, she gave us. I remember my mom said, I don't care what you do, but make sure that you choose a career and that you get your education. That, and that's was from, I mean, as, as young as I remember. You know, it's, it's funny because I remember in junior high, you know, telling a teacher, I don't know what the exercise was about, but she was saying, what do you want to be in life? And it happened that I had just visited my, my sister's uh, job, and I, re I remember meeting her boss, and the guy had an, a huge office, mm -hmm. right? And I noticed that everybody was treating him with a lot of respect. And I was probably 12, 13 years old, I'm, I'm not sure. And I remember, I don't know what I'm going to do in life, but I want to be like him. I want his job. <laughs> I, want him, I want his job. I want his office. You know, and, you know, and at that point, I started thinking, i got to figure out what he does. And the more you study about people, you mm -hmm. say, you know, this guy has gone to college. He has done a certain things, you know, to put him in preparation for that position. And uh, that's what I focus on my life, you know. People say, oh, you work too much. I tell you, I do exactly what I love. Right. You know, I, often I hear my friends say, Fabio, you're just working way too many hours. And I say, no, I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, it's probably similar love to you. you, I, you yeah. spend hours skating. Why do you do that? It is a hard work, but deep inside it feels good, doesn't right. it? You know, so I remember, back to my teacher, I remember she saying, what do you want to do in life? And I said, hey, I want to go to college. And, you know, back to my aunt's story, and I remember she had just come to the United States. I remember it happened to be the occasion where this aunt, that I re Aunt Sylvia, had just come to her with her family to the United States for a vacation. And uh, she brought me a little car that I have kept for many, many years. And I'll tell you the story behind it later, but reality is, when she gave me that little car, she said, Fabinho, and then she called me Fabinho, Fabinho, this is why I, this is what I brought for you. I never forgot that. And I told her, one day, I'm going to go to the United States. You know, and now I had to be a kid. But I remember telling my teacher, remember this in a very poor neighborhood, right, inside of a class, she's asking everyone's vision. And I said, hey, I'm going to go to college, and then one day I'm going to go to the United States. And I remember all the kids just <laughs> laughing at me. And you don't right. forget those occasions, right, yeah. where you're embarrassed. And I remembered, you know, uh, Eunice was her name, uh, name of this teacher. She said, Fab Fabio, don't let this bother you. Believe in your dreams. It's somehow it's going to happen. And I never forgot that. Right. You know, she could have very likely laughed like mm -hmm. the other kids. You're just a poor kid. You can barely pay for, for your lunch. How are you going to get out of the country, right? So things like this, you mm -hmm. never forget. You know, and I was so proud of myself. I think about five years ago, I had a chance to go back to that same city <laughs> in, where I was helping a, a, a foundation. And I made a point to meet with that teacher, and I said, do you remember what you said to me? And she said, absolutely not, right? <laughs> but I told her, she was crying, and I said, I don't care what you, if you remember or not, but I remember how you made me feel that day. And to me, it's probably one of the most important 
days of my life because again it's another angel uh, that said just believe you believe that you can do it and although we didn't have the steps I didn't know what I need to do somehow I'm I'm here you know and I was able to pursue my education and finally finish my master's degree and to me it, it is a, um, a preparation meeting opportunity right if you're not prepared for the opportunity you may let it go but uh, when you have a, a person with a vision uh, teaching you or mm -hmm. opening your eyes and say, just prepare yourself. One day you may have that big office and, and it's not about the big office, right. but it does feel good that uh, uh, you dream as a kid of accomplishing something and, and you finally made it happen. Right. Kelly, with all the great accomplishments that you have, what are some of your biggest trials? What are the things that you've had to overcome? Um, well, I have a few. Um, I think overcoming my dad, like, accepting that as I got older was mm -hmm. a huge compliment. Um, I guess a compliment, I don't know if you'd really say that, but um, something that I accepted, I guess, um, mm -hmm. and figuring out that it was a disease and knowing that it was going to be okay um, even as I got older because even as a, a child, you know, that 10-year-old, 11-year-old, you know, speed skater that I was, he would tell me that I sucked and I never was going to be good. And, you know, this girl is going to beat me. This girl is going to beat me. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny because I'm still friends with those girls today. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, yes, I maybe have beaten them and, you know, vice versa. Um, but like Fabio said, you know, having someone tell you that you can't, you, mm -hmm. you remember that. Yeah. And um, I remember the day, the time, the place everything um so that was a huge challenge to, to overcome and like, accept that as of how how it was you know or how it was going to be um but moving forward i i think maybe that was in my head you know never forgot mm -hmm. about it because i used that to my advantage um to become stronger and a stronger athlete mm -hmm. you know um and skating becoming who i was was a huge thing um so when i'd be at practice sometimes and i'd be mad and I, this girl is going to beat me. I'd be like, no, he said that, that girl is going to beat me. <laughs> so, you know, I used, used him to help me, even though he was hurting me, but I used it in a positive. And that's um, kind of why I'm here today, actually, I think, because in 2010, I had a double compound fracture where they have told me I would never be able to skate again. Wow. Um, so you can imagine, you know, just missing your first Olympic team by one spot, um, kind of by ruling. And two months later, I was in the hospital and in this bed. I've never been in a hospital bed in my life um, and being told I would never be able to skate again. So that was a crazy nonsense um, mm -hmm. to be told that. I was actually even asked the paramedics on the way to the hospital, am I going to be able to skate again? And they looked at me and laughed and said, I don't know about you, but your foot's hanging off your leg. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember saying, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be able to skate again. They just didn't know who they're dealing with. I guess not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, because even laying there on the ice, I mm -hmm. remember saying to myself, my foot's hanging off, but I'm going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. And it really was. And I went to the Olympic Training Center. Um, like Fabio said, like God, like if it wasn't mm -hmm. for God sending me there, I probably wouldn't have been able to come back and skate again because I was literally Absolutely. in the best hands I could have ever have been in. Um, I still keep in contact with my trainers today. Um, actually, he just texted me two weeks ago and said, is there anything you need, Kelly, for preparation for 2018? So. I had a huge support group um, in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center, and that's something that I'll never forget. It was um, so important to me that I got to go there and got to use my rehab as my training because mm -hmm. as that six-year-old little girl, now I'm 24, and I had never been off my skates longer for than six months ever. Incredible. So that was <laughs> crazy to take in, um, not to be on my skates every day, twice a day, like I was, you know, what I'm used to every day. Absolutely. Um, so I used my rehab as my training. Um, I did rehab every day, twice a day. 
Um, and let me tell you, rehab is a lot harder than you think. <laughs> Picking up marbles with your toes, I'd oh, wow. break out in sweat because my foot did not work. It <laughs> didn't want to do anything. And it probably took me almost two years to fully come back um, because the first year I had a plate and 10 screws in. And I worked with that um, as much as I could. And I actually did skate. And I wasn't able to leave Colorado Springs to come back to Utah mm -hmm. until I was my foot was in a skate. So that just tells you again how what a support group I had. Like um, the psychiatrist was there at the local um, ice rink. The, my two head doctors were my boyfriend at the time was. So it was a huge group that I had, you know, at this local ice rink in Colorado Springs. <laughs> I was the only one there, the whole ice to myself. And I'm like, I, am I going to be able to do this? So, you know, <laughs> we had no idea. We had so many questions, but not enough answers. Um, but I did it. I was able to skate and, you know, pack up my stuff and left Colorado Springs about four or five months later, you know, came back to Utah to get on um, long track. And that was probably my biggest fear ever. Um, I actually remember calling my mom and sitting in the parking lot because I'm like, I don't know if I could go in because my accident happened where I skate at, at every day, spot, you know, yeah. the same spot. So here I am having to face it, you know, every <laughs> single day. I'm like, I don't know if I can go in there. And she's like, Kelly, you'll be fine. You can go in there. Um, so that was huge. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that, um, so that was really big um, to overcome because then I um, make the, the Olympic team in 2014 and it, even that was just so emotional and a, and a dream come true. Um, making that Olympic team in 2014 and and going there and, um, and being at the arena um, was incredible. And I even get more emotional now because my head doctor um, that was in Colorado was at my race in oh, Sochi. Wow. Uh -huh. And that was crazy because him and I got along amazingly. And, um, so two occasions, um, being so special, being at the Winter Olympics, my dream come true since I was a six-year-old that I talked about earlier. Um, and now I hear him living my biggest dream of my life. It was just so surreal, so crazy, so everything. Um, but being in Sochi, I sat down with my head doctor that was in Colorado Springs, you know, like I said, who got to be there, got to be there at my race and it was just him and I, like I said, we were very close because he had told me when I was in Colorado, one day I was just in his office and he had said, Kelly, you know what? I have two sons and if I ever had a daughter, I would want her to be you or to that be like awesome. you. So it, that's why I think- a huge compliment, right? Yeah, and I think, and I looked up to him so much or, you know, mm -hmm. I just trusted everything that he said he wasn't my actual physical therapist but mm -hmm. he put me with a very good ther physical therapist who I still talk to this day but Dr. Monroe was incredible and um so leading to that to Sochi sitting in his office again he looked at me and said Kelly I had no idea if you're ever um we're going to be able to come here we we never told you how hard it was going to be or what obstacles you know you had to face right. um <laughs> He's like, but I knew your determination. I saw you every day, twice a day. Um, I And I remember when you first walked in here with your mom, you know, with your boot. He goes, I can still remember that. And he goes, and look where we are. We're at the Olympic Games. Does so. that feel good? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> One of the things that I, that I like the most, sometimes you hear, especially the young generation, they'll come to you and say, how do you become successful, right? And I don't know what that means, to be honest with you because it means different things to most people, right? Mm -hmm. A definition of success, success. But I remember back in that old exercise when the, t the teacher asked me, you know, what are you going to do when you become an adult, when you become successful, when you get your education and you go to the United States and all this stuff that people around you said, no, you can't do it, <laughs> yeah. right? There's a million reasons why you can't do certain things, and they would let you know for mm -hmm. sure. You know, one of the things that I learned very quickly is, you know, <laughs> listen to your competition, right? Because they're the first ones to tell you exactly. plain blank yeah. what, what <laughs> you're not good at it, right? But I remember as a kid, you know, when they, uh, this teacher asked me, what do you want to do 
when you accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish? You know, what is that going to look like for you? And as a child being 11 years old, you, you're going to laugh at my, my, my dream back then because that's why, how I consider myself successful, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why now. You know, at that moment in my life, I remember specifically, I said, I want to be so rich mm -hmm. that I can drink a Coke whenever I want. That was my definition of success, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Am I successful today? I think I am because I'm now in a position to drink my Coke. Yeah, I barely drink Coke anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what defines success for that little kid, and I, I never forgot that. And the moment you have a chance to walk it in my house today, like I said, I barely drink Coke anymore, but I do have a Coke collection <laughs> because it's meaningful to right. me. When I see those Cokes, which I brought a Coke from you know, 40, 50 different countries that I went through, it's a beautiful collection. And people say, oh, you collect Coke. And to me, I have a different definition. I, this sure, is a collection yeah, of a dream as a child. That's how I, I know I'm successful uh, because I've been able to be a better myself and fulfill that uh, dream of a 12 years old kid when everybody mm -hmm. said, yeah, really? Is that all that you think of? I it is. If everything goes wrong in my life, mm -hmm. I will feel pretty good uh, to where I am today because I, 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 I set a goal as a child. Mm -hmm. And I think um, you know, I, that goal is, has been accomplished. And it is interesting because obviously I had to take a lot of steps to be able to buy that Coke, mm -hmm. right? You know, we talk about education, the struggles and the steps you took, Kelly, it is so similar to mine. I remember the street that I grew up uh, had to be maybe 20, 25 different homes. I don't know that we had one single parent mm -hmm. with a college education at that point. So to be where we, I am today, where we are today mm -hmm. with our stories, it's a huge accomplishment. You can't uh, measure su success in, in many different shape or forms. You know, I look back and I often, you know, I often go back to Brazil and I make a point to stop at the same neighborhood every single time. And I, I, I take my, my friends to dinner and lunch and I look back all the accomplishments we have here with businesses and companies and traveling. That is my home. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I miss that every time I go. Right. You know, I love all the things that I've accomplished in life, you know, spending a time with a childhood friend, eating at the same places that we, we couldn't mm -hmm. afford then, to me, is, there's no better right. gratification. So you talk about the struggles and, and definition of success. Uh, you know, that is exactly how I feel. When I have a chance to go back to my childhood and obviously, not all of them had the chances uh, to come to the United States, but many of them today hold important jobs with the government and they've been able to go to school and get a, a college education. Uh, it's just that we had different paths. Right. I came to this country and I've been very blessed, but they're also very successful. They also had different goals. So there is better definition <laughs> of gratitude than that. Feel like you, you belong uh, home. You know. It, it is funny because most of them will say, Fabio, what exactly do you do? We have no idea. <laughs> and I, I, I don't want to talk about it, right? I don't want to talk about the, li the life I have here. I'm so interested in going back to 20 years mm -hmm. ago. I said, can we just leave this moment uh, and, and talk about our childhood uh, memories? Um, and that's usually what we do. So, Wow, you guys, I can't believe we're already here. It seems like we just started this and, and we're running out of time, but I wanted to ask, you guys are so different, come from different backgrounds, different countries, different hemispheres, right? How did you guys meet? Javier, do you want to take that one? Yes, <laughs> you know, it is interesting because, you know, I learned that from my mother and I'm sure you have the same lesson at home. When you are blessed in any shape or form mm -hmm. with resources, you know, you have the responsibility to, to help those around you. Right, whether it's with a, a kind word or a gesture of support or any other shape or form. You know, I knew of Kelly for a long time ago. I'm, an, you know, during the Olympics, I don't sleep, right? Mm -hmm. I watched every event, every possible, so I knew of her. And a few months ago, we had a chance to connect and uh, one of, our, one of our, our businesses had an opportunity to support Kelly in some of her initiatives. And that's knowing her story and what she's, all about. I mean, it didn't take us much to, to provide uh, the little support that we were mm -hmm. providing to mm -hmm. her as an athlete. But reality is, 
you know, what we're doing to her, knowing that she's going out there and talking mm -hmm. to children and talking to graduation, she's doing exactly the same things as we are. You know, and that is the reason why we're here uh, sitting together today is the passion for what we do, um, plus the ability to the ability and desire to to uh, help and support others. Right. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Final question: If you could meet yourself when you were six, twelve, in high school, and give yourself some advice, inspire yourself, or inspire somebody who's that age now. What would you tell them? Um, I would say that you can't ever give up on your dreams and you have to find your dreams pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I think that's how Fabio and I, um, Fabio being such a um, successful businessman, is that he found that at a young age and that's what he wanted to do and, mm -hmm. you know, be in the business side. And, you know, and that's how he's amazing and can support and, you know, do everything that he does and add his dream that he knew at such a young age. And that's, same with me. I knew at six years old that mm -hmm. I wanted to be an Olympian and follow that dreams. And again, that's why we're both sta sitting here today and talking to you is because we knew our dream at such a young age and we never mm -hmm. lost sight of that. And you have to walk by faith and not by sight. And I think that's a huge thing um, that I would tell the next generation. And to always believe in yourself. And that's my huge logo um, is to always believe in yourself um, because at, as that 11 year old, 13 year old, 16 year old, I was not that girl that believed in herself. Um, it took many, many years to finally to believe in myself. And I think that's why I would love to give able to give back because I know there's so many girls who don't believe in themselves or, you know, boys or whatever it is that they just want to stop and, you know, listen to those people um, or teachers that tell you that you can't do it. Like in Absolutely. Fabio's this, um, scenario that they told him that he couldn't be a businessman. Mm. Well, like here he is today. Um, so I think to be able to have that and to tell those kids that hear that, that you can do it and you can never give up and you always have to believe in yourself and, and your dreams. No dream is too small. All right, Fabio, same question. If you can meet yourself when you're that six-year-old boy in the streets of Brazil, what would you tell yourself? What would be the advice you'd want to give yourself? You know, if I had a good memory, I would repeat your words. <laughs> I would say word by word. But reality is always believe, mm -hmm. right? The world, the situation mm -hmm. would tell you otherwise, right? You, you're a poor kid. You grew up in a poor neighborhood. Your dad is not in a position to help you, right? Don't dream too high, right? Don't achieve your dreams. Be like everybody else around you. Right? That's what the world, the universe would tell you. So the, tell you. Uh, yeah. the moment, like Kelly said, the moment that you define, I want something else. I'm, I'm, I'm searching something else, and I'm capable of something else. You know, I think God himself will place some angels, like I already mentioned a few in my life, and you had a, quite a few in your life. Listen to those people. Mm -hmm. Listen to your teacher. Listen to your aunt. Listen to those around you who believes in you. And things is going to work out. Yeah. It doesn't mean that's easy, right? No, I have struggled. Not. I came here with a very little money. You know, that I, in fact, there was a <laughs> moment in my life that it, I had a, a school administrator go into inside of a class and, and get me out of the, the class and say, listen, your tuition is overdue. You can't be in class. You know, and tears came down because I had, to, she said, you got to go back to your country. You know, where is your dad and your mom? Why, why are they not sending you money, right? And um, I had no response other than the tears. And oddly enough, I thought of my grades, and I said, why don't you look at my grades? You know, and somehow that worked it out. Mm -hmm. You know, she'll look at my grades and say, I'm, now the person that's trying to get me out of school, they say, I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. And she did. Um, so believe in your dreams. Don't let the challenges stop you. You know, I know you out there thinking, mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this can't be for me, right? My circumstances, my life doesn't allow it. Don't let those words get into your head. Believe in yourself, believe in your dreams. You can achieve the world. You know, I sit here today and feel inadequate. You know, I'm sitting by an Olympian, a US Olympian. What, a, what an amazing opportunity for me. I look up to you and say, wow, what can I learn from this person, this friend, right? And, you know, she probably look at other people the same way. My story is simple. I would love to hear your story. That's what life is about. 
but nothing else. Believe in yourself and a little more than that. When you get there, don't forget to help other people. Right. And I think that's what I learned from you a lot. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in this world helping other people. So mm -hmm. when you're blessed with a... And you want ability, to, I think. Right? You want to be able to tell your yeah. story. Tell your story. Yeah. So you, if you can inspire one person, that's enough. Yeah. Right? You change one person's life. It's pretty amazing how you can say you did that just by your story and your obstacles. And mm -hmm. just like I had talked earlier in my interview, how I changed, I don't know if I changed her life, but I gave her an opportunity to yeah, keep absolutely. chasing her dreams. And, and that's why I love where Fabio says mm -hmm. that when he goes back to Brazil, that he doesn't talk about his life now. He talks about mm -hmm. his childhood. And I think that's so neat to be able to, you know, to still go back in that moment and to still go back there and to tell that, that story. Because I, my dream at the end of the day is to have a gold medal around my neck mm -hmm. and to have a foundation to help those inner city Absolutely. kids that don't think that they can be able to get out of wherever that inner city may be mm -hmm. um, to the next big thing. So uh -huh. I think that's so inspiring and that's why we can sit here today and, you know, to help you um, to live your dreams. Absolutely.